Hey everyone, welcome to the GIST Podcast. If you're tired of being comfortable and want to take on living life from the context of 100%, fuck yeah. Join us each week as we share lessons we're experiencing in this crazy game called life. We invite you to play along and get your shit together. Take responsibility for how your life is currently going. And at the same time, take on new, fun, and sometimes crazy shit. We promise to challenge your thinking by being vulnerable, authentic, and straight up with what we're dealing with, what doesn't work, and what can. Be warned, this is not your grandma's podcast. Uh, Good morning, beautiful people. Welcome to episode 49 of the Just Life Podcast. We are visited by two very special people on this snowy Saturday morning. One was a former soldier and elite athlete The other, a ballerina and recovering lawyer, from being held hostage by a Mexican cartel at the end of a gun barrel to battling with the raging burn of alcoholism and tasked by the fear of raising children alone. They are a husband and wife power team who've seen a lot together and do even more as a team to help each other and those around them to surrender to uncertainty and stand confidently in their heart's purpose, showing what it takes to be able to give up the act of trying to always live up to other people's expectations. I'm sure you get this often. And I admire and respect how you two show up in the world with the ease and grace that you have. It's a magical experience for us to see, and I'm left inspired by what it takes to be able to embrace the weights of our mistakes and chase the magic of life that waits. So good morning, Tony and Marcy. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having us. Good morning, Dave. Yeah. This, uh, I, I, so I, I, I feel like I have to say this. We don't get enough acknowledgement in, this, in the, the journey that we've gone through to like the time way back when, I just keep coming back to this. It's like you're, you're coming into the castle, you're, you're being introduced to the king, and there is like who you are as being recognized and acknowledged in front of everybody. And what would life be like if if we actually got that kind of acknowledgement every time we entered a new group of people. The people actually got us in a way that isn't, so what do you do? Which is why I do this. Mm-hmm. Because it is not what we do. So welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Really good to be here. Excellent. <laughs> We're excited. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got to say, buddy? in general about what you said or just good morning to speak just with. good morning whatever's there for you man my name is wakefield bruce drama poet i am very excited to be with marcy and tony because of what you guys want to bring and i would like to be a part of that because it sounds like the art of word via you at creative mornings the other day has inspired you to want more words happening around you and you want to facilitate that and i would like to help be that big mouth Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I just can't wait to have poetry in, in Calgary's beautiful Grand Theatre. I just can't wait. Be super cool. And it sounds like you two have a lot to write about. That was a pretty interesting bio. <laughs> um, She's like, holy fuck. Yeah. This is not what I signed up for. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I sometimes think, and I've always sort of thought that I live an unremarkable life and I don't mean that in a I feel sorry for myself sort of way you mean in a human being type way like you're not right special. right right and that you know weird stuff doesn't happen in my life or it hasn't taken any weird trajectories but maybe when, when I look at it when I hear David say that stuff I think it probably has <laughs> <laughs> yeah it shifts the perspective a little bit like wait yeah. is that me is yeah. that about me right wow, I'm pretty special <laughs> yeah the, the things that uh, really define us in our journeys, and then we kind of dismiss them, not kind of, we just dismiss them. And uh, to somebody else, it's like, mind-blowingly, I can't believe that's even something that somebody had to deal with, could deal with, was left to deal with, right? Like, um, and the reality is, we got all of us got so many of those stories. Yeah. 
Yeah, people who are saying that to you are sitting on something just like that. Yeah. And they, and they, because it's their normal, so they just think, oh yeah, well that's that was not a big deal, and we got through it, right? You know. Exactly. But, but, oh wow, you were held gunpoint. Tell me about that. You know. Yeah. I don't know about that. So I actually do want that. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you, by the way, this is all about you guys. So you're welcome to share whatever you want to share. Do you want to hear the gunpoint story? Uh, well, that's it's, a great way to start. Why not start off with a bang? Yeah. 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 Sorry, I had a bang. Sorry about the pun. Yeah. Sorry so, about the pun. So. Um, I guess there's a little bit of a backstory. So um, Tony and I had built a, a business and sold it to a big insurance company. Um, and we worked, you know, we were then hired on by that company and um, we were making money hand over fist and we started to get fairly self-important or at least I felt, and looking back, I feel that I got very self-important. I think I was way more self-important. Well, <laughs> um, and uh, started attaching to titles and the amount of money in the bank account and different um, um, benefits and bonuses and all of those things that um, typically define people. And um, but truthfully, deep down, I I never felt that I was doing what I should be doing. I always felt that what we were doing was sort of meaningless, but having the like the bank account was honestly was a huge grab and the title that I had was very impressive to my family and and to uh, maybe people that I knew uh, previously and it seemed like the right trajectory to be on so that's sort of the backstory so we had a bit of cash burning a hole in our pocket and so we bought um, bought a resort in Mexico and on the day we inked the deal the universe <laughs> um, put us in a situation um, where we were out for, for dinner celebrating and we were with, um, I don't know, about 40 friends. Wow. And um, it, it wasn't purely a celebration for that, but anyway, we're in this restaurant and um, everyone's enjoying themselves, drinking wine and whatever. And the maitre d' comes into the section of the restaurant that we were in um, and we took up the whole restaurant and he um, was sweating profusely and oh, took a minute to realize what the hell was going on. Um, but I looked up and he was right in front of me and he had a gun to his head. And uh, so... Um, so this is at the celebration dinner? Yeah, yeah. So the maitre d' had a gun to his head. And um, so then the shit got real. Um, as they say yeah. right wow. and and a few more guys entered the the restaurant each carrying a different variety of gun I was away at this time yeah, yeah. in the washroom having a pee you, and whistling <laughs> whistling <laughs> tunes and yeah, yeah. I had no idea what was going on it's all good right <laughs> yeah. wow so then my um you know, you start to perk up and, and if you want to live in the moment, I'll tell you, you're in the moment and those moments are like hours, seconds are like hours. And, um, anyway, so the long and short of it was that they wanted a, a vehicle and, um, the, the person who owned the vehicle, a very nice vehicle, very nice, right. It wasn't, it wasn't a junker. Um, and he was, resisting and um therefore um we things escalated was this this person was part of your group yes yeah a, a personal friends <laughs> like, of the group the keys i know right, right. Yeah. he actually gave the keys to his wife i think at that point or oh. threw them in the pool i can't remember oh <laughs> anyway the situation escalated yeah. he did what he felt was right in the moment yeah. and and that's you know neither here nor there but things escalated and we were then put onto the ground. So it started with, um, you know, the, the, the head gunman was um, wanting the keys to the storming of other people. They just wanted cash at first. So they were just robbing us of cash and, um, and phones because they didn't want anything recorded. And uh, it turned into us laying on the ground with guns to the backs of our heads. Um, I mean, there wasn't 40 of them, but, you know, there was sort of um, One assigned guys per, <laughs> per group One's of people. Enough. Right, right. And uh, then... And I'm still having a pity. Yeah, oh. it turned <laughs> well, into... Well, imagine your surprise, eh? Wow, I can't wait to hear your perspective. It turned into uh, almost, 
like um a comedy it was so ridiculous like it just it it was insane it's gotta be an awkward thing it must be weird when you're the gun okay now everybody lay down like that's just gotta be weird for everybody right and of course there's a language barrier as well and then uh, the i'm the, sorry what <laughs> yeah <laughs> the three the threats, oh, the threats started escalating, yeah. and yeah, luckily totally. I didn't understand them, but a friend of ours was um, very, very upset by what was saying. They were going to take the women and I think your dad was and, changing his theory nights. Right, right, my dad missed the whole thing and asked me what was going on. Oh, he was Why are you guys laying down? <laughs> yeah, why well, is everyone under the tree? <laughs> yeah, that's what they thought yeah. they were collecting tips, I think, or um, something. Oh, wow. Or something. Anyway, <laughs> wow. I mean, at, at the beginning, it, because it is very surreal. Sure, sure it takes yeah. Everyone like, a moment what to realize going on? what in the hell is going on. Mm. So, um... I'll let Tony interject with sort of the, his Is this about the time when you were getting Well, like I had washed my hands and I was coming back with my hands in my pockets and I, th I thought they were playing games or something. Someone lost a contact what, lens? What is, why is everybody lying on the ground? And this guy stepped around the corner of the kitchen um, and made me kneel down, pointing a revolver at me and put the gun in my mouth. In um, your mouth? Yeah, like this. And... and um, he wanted my watch, and I have a watch, it's my traveler watch. I bought it in San Francisco for like eight bucks in Chinatown or something. <laughs> yeah, so right. he, he right. gets hold of my watch and looks at it and threw it away in disgust. <laughs> <laughs> so we still have the watch. We still have the watch. He's uh, probably like, why is this white guy having this cheap piece of yeah. shit? What is with this exactly. thing? Exactly. <laughs> Where's the real one? <laughs> so I, 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 I'm, it, as Marcy said, it's very surreal. And what's going through my head is the um, scene in Snatch in the bar where the three guys walk in and Vinnie Jones as Tony Bullet Tooth. He's in the bar, yeah. and they, they're trying to hold him up with a replica gun, and he's got a Desert Eagle point, whatever. Um, and he looks at their gun, and he's got replica written down the side. And for some reason, I started looking at the side of the revolver in my mouth to see if it had replica on it. I don't know why I did that, but that's how my brain reacted brain at that point. So I thought, that point. scene was flashing through my head, and then oh. I, try, I, I then start to realise this is actually not a replica. Um, and a replica would probably blow my head off anyway, but I, I started worrying about Marcy being taken and I'm, I'm making plans to throw a big bucket of charcoal, hot charcoal on them if they attempted. I know that sounds ridiculous, yeah, but that would yeah. well, just remind me of what are you going to do, like, <laughs> yeah. just let yeah. oh, okay, well, maybe we'll catch up with you. Like, no, that's not how that's going to go. Right. Right. But she, she right. wasn't going to be leaving with them. That's how my head yeah, over my dead body came. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, so... Oh. Anyway, um, not to make a long story longer, but eventually the Mater D actually was taken hostage, which was really, really awful. Um, it wasn't one of us. It was um, someone who was more vulnerable to begin with. Yeah, no kidding. Um, he was dumped off a few miles down uh, unharmed. Wow. Well, that's, um, that's good. And thank God for that. And uh, but as they were leaving with him, and we didn't actually know uh, what was it was chaos, right? As you yeah. can imagine, it was yeah. chaos. Um, but a German shepherd, I kid you not, like came out of the darkness, this massive Alsatian, and bit one of the and dogs. attacked one of the guys, and he shot shot at it and missed it. And uh, then all of a sudden they were gone, and then we knew that the so, so that the taken. shepherd. Had them in a panic. Attacked. And, free, and they freaked out. Yeah. And it, left. Yeah. Dude, that is... That is like guardian angel type uh, stuff. Yeah. yeah. That is... Uh, our uh, big, I think our biggest worry at the time was that the Mexican police would show up. Because then because things get really... Uh, and right? then it the would have... Guns kind of like not, not, would have been not totally, tolerating and, and you just... Would have been totally out of control. Oh, I see. Yeah. It would have been a shootout. Between right. the cartel and right. the police. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So which is... Yeah. We're kind of hoping that they don't show until... Robbers are down the road somewhere. Right, no kidding. They're a little loose with a trigger. That's, yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah. yeah. Wow, so that's how the journey started. For me, I mean, it affected, wow. this whole thing affected Tony in a very different mm -hmm. way than it did me. And I didn't think that it affected me because we went, you know, we, we finished off our holiday and it, it was stressful. I kind of never wanted to go back again. Didn't know how that would play out. But we came home and we still had our jobs and our, um, we were building a business and, um, 
so it, we just got on with shit and it wasn't really something that came to mind. I had a hard time talking about it. We were also keeping it on the down low. Yeah, it's not a thing, you know, nothing yeah. happened. Right. And also because we were running a business there, we have a resort. Do, right. Like, yeah, it's safe here. Yeah. Don't, don't worry. Which I had serious problems. Oh, yeah. With, yeah. You, yeah. you know, with not being completely honest I'm about, about that. It's so not like we people all... go there and get held up at gunpoint yeah. or anything like that. <laughs> right? Right. Wow. So, yeah. um, so then for me, some um, strange stuff started happening probably maybe even six months later. I started um, avoiding like the bank. Um, I started getting uh, having panic yeah. attacks and um, things like that getting onto airplanes and nothing that really made sense. And I truthfully did not make any yeah. sort of connection mm. at all. And I, I realized that I had this, um, the only thing that I can liken it to is like a hot coal in my stomach at all times. Okay. So that's kind of that weird thing you get when you're anxious, but it was mm. all the time. And so, um, that's, uh, it was very uncomfortable for me and confronting it was not, nothing that I wanted to do. I didn't want to see counselors and anything like that. And also, I didn't know what the hell it was. Right. I thought it was just work stress. And like right. probably eight or 10 months later, I started realizing, um, at, strangely after reading Amanda Lindhout's uh, s stories, um, do you guys know who she I'm is? Not she, I mean, let's be she, honest. I am this. What I experienced is not in in the realm of what she experienced. Is she from Alberta? She is. Right and she was taken hostage. I saw her um, speak so oh, It was pretty intense. Oh. So it was yeah. the first time yeah. that I had heard PTSD, PTSD, and I thought, shit, that, that's what I have. And um, wow. then the jury sort of started so, for me. So just for context, like approximately how long ago was this? Uh, I think it was five years ago. Five years ago. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So, so definitely want to hear more about that if you're willing to share. But I'm curious to know what this was all like for you. And and, and if this yeah. is like drumming up stuff for you guys, not at totally all. No, 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 no. Um. What well, once we got home? I mean, the, even being down there after the robbery is a bit surreal. Like we kind of lock in our doors and we're putting new bolts on. Yeah. On the gates, um, yeah. our, care, our caretaker at the property we are down there was in a big panic, and um, but I, I, I reacted in a different way to Marty. I think um, I, I almost completely shut down. What what started to happen with me was um, I, I had bumpy sleep patterns. I got irritable. Um, I got a little impatient. Um, I felt like my masculinity was bigger than this incident somehow. And I, I grew up in an Irish family. My father's from Northern Ireland. Um, we had a lot of bomb and gun problems during the Troubles, both in England and in Northern Ireland. So you, my, my father raised me, uh, and he's a, he's a powerful man, to not ever express feelings or worries or hurt you just you work if you're broke you work if you're upset you work if like uh, you're divorced you work and you work and drink and drink and work and mm. um, so I, I've been in recovery for some years at this point I'm not sure how many over a decade so I, I actually started doubling down on going to meetings and, and when that incident happened yeah sometime afterwards because I, I <clears throat> you noticed something was going on not really. I think, you know, Marcy and I have a very close spiritual relationship as well as a marriage. And Marcy's not uh, afraid in the gentlest and kindest possible way to say, like, you're not behaving like you normally do. You know, maybe you should. Um, so that really helps me. I.e. I send him to meetings. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or it's you're, time. You're, you're doing dumb shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's so important yeah, and it's yeah. so critical to the, be able to stand powerfully there because mm -hmm. you love him. Is that that's it? Nothing yeah. else. It, yeah, people are so quick to be like, "Well, this isn't working anymore." I'm, I'm yeah, you know, it's right. so weird how yeah, you know, we're in love and we like expect that to be the glue that mm -hmm. keeps everything together for the next sixty years. It's mm -hmm. kind of weird. 
people don't think that there might be some work involved or you might actually have to sacrifice something or support the person or that kind of thing. Right? We, we, we I, I won't speak for Marcy, but I, I, I believe that our spiritual connection is, is much deeper than the word love. But yeah. sin, more so, yeah. but more so sense, since then, this sort of yeah. this um, blip in our lives um, has changed everything. I think, and it wasn't yeah. just the robbery because stuff happened after too. Sure, to yeah. Um, yeah. you know to add to add insult to injury when we um, when we sort of thought we were through all of this stuff. Or I I don't I guess we didn't think we were through the emotional stuff. But again, we were had had first into work and building a business and the company that we'd sold to um, shut it down in one afternoon. They came in and and pulled the rug out and said, uh, we're shutting the Canadian, our, our non-core Canadian uh, divisions and you're done. So all so of a sudden- five years of entrepreneurship gone. And it completely <laughs> exposes, exposes you because the thing that I was using and he was using mm. to escape dealing with mm. um, the discomfort around the PTSD or uh, whatever you want to call it, um, that thing was now completely removed. Identity. Yeah, I right. would, one, one moment we were CEO and COO of a federally approved insurance company, and right. the next moment we were not. Right. We were Tony and Marcy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, your other life was gone. <laughs> right, yeah. right. And the thing by which all, all around wow. us measured yeah, yeah. Success who we and were as people were. and yeah. how successful we were, it was gone in 15 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so, wow. yeah, so I, I think that that added to the Mexico incident really started to have us dig much deeper into ourselves individually and ourselves as a couple and our relationship with God or higher power or Allah or Buddha, whatever you want to call it. Um, and we have different views and a different relationship with that. Um, but it, it, it's changed our lives completely as individuals and as a couple, I think. Yeah, I think, um, so when the when the robbery happened, I don't even know if that's the right thing to call it. I hate calling it the robbery. A hold up. The <laughs> hold up, it's a stick yeah. up. The stick it's up, the stick up. up, I like that. So when the that's stick great. up happened, I mean, it's sort of cliche, but you do start thinking like in those moments, like, is this a sign for, that's the first thing. So is it a sign? I'm I survived. Sorry. What am I supposed to do with this? Right. I mean, it's a bit dramatic to say I survived because lots well, of people survived this no, stuff. I don't, but, no, I don't think it's dramatic. You say right. lots of people and, and let's say there's a hundred thousand cases. Well, we're talking about 7 billion people here. Right. Or right. even if it's just North America, I mean, you got people vacationing and stuff. Hopefully, it's a pretty low percentage of people getting held up. <laughs> Let's hope. Right, and surviving. Yeah. So, I think it's a pretty big deal. But right. what is strange, we were in Vancouver a few weeks afterwards, and in the Sheraton Wall Center downtown, beautiful hotel right in the middle of the nicest area of Vancouver. The two international women's soccer teams are staying there. Four o'clock in the afternoon, a guy in the restaurant there sitting having his uh, having tea or drinks or something. Guy walks in, shoots him in the back of the head and leaves. So Whoa. we attributed it to Mexico. However, in context, Mexico is no more dangerous than, part, I mean, Van Vancouver at that time was riddled with gang warfare and so was Calgary. So, you know, it's not yeah. about Mexico. It's about the moment, I think. And, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, because yeah. if you were there, that would have been a traumatic experience for whoever, totally. is, whoever was there. Yeah. Right. So, and, and you they forget survive. about that. They survive yeah. it. Yeah, and, that's a good point. Uh, it, it's given me a lot of empathy too for people who survive um i mean any kind of trauma but this type of trauma because my my view has always been oh well you're lucky and of course you're lucky um but it's it doesn't mean that you don't suffer some degree of trauma um yeah. but sort of the point that i was getting at before was um so you have those moments um in an event like that, where you think, um, what are you supposed to do with this, etc. And then we went back to work and I didn't address any of it. Mm. And so then I, I feel like it, we, us losing the business for both of us was like the universe just slapping us in the face. Like, I told you this. Yeah, you got to deal with As a thing. robbery, I told you. <laughs> I don't even think it was to uh, telling us to deal with 
Oh, um, the emotions, I think it was telling us that you're not off. meant to be doing what you're doing. Right. So dig deep. Right. And look at something else. Look at how you can impact the Stop world using this, people. start using this. Right. Yeah, exactly. I, I think God, well, what you, you can use God. God's yeah. cool. Um, We're cool with God. Kind of say life is fragile. You can come and go. And all that work, professional title, BMW stuff, that's not who you are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we had two incidents, like, and that we feel they were both linked. Absolutely. Yeah. And, we, and the, the, the morning after uh, the business was closed, we just got in the car and went to Kelowna and we had a period of, of mourning because suddenly we're not the same people we thought we were yeah, absolutely. yesterday. And it was shameful. We felt yeah. shame around losing it. I was uh, very <clears throat> ashamed to tell my family. I'm an only kid and, and uh, the first um, person to go um, this far um, from a corporate standpoint. And a lawyer who had decided to take an entrepreneurial journey, right. which is... Mm. You know, like that's unusual. Yeah, all these guys are aware. Yeah. All these real life pressures we put on ourselves. Right, right. Yeah. Interesting. So anyway, we took a wow. year. We took a year to. Uh, I I don't even know. But there was no plan. We took a year off though. We decided we were going to take a year off, and in that year we explored ourselves a, a lot. Yeah, I think you should talk about the garage sale on the road trip. That was a, a right. moment. <laughs> yeah. Can, can we can we hold the garage yeah, for sure. one second? Because I just feel that I feel like Wakefield's person. Yeah, he is. I was it. I was just <laughs> over here absorbing this. Well, I just want I want to hear because there was something that connected with you over here when when they mentioned that you know BMWs this that and the other thing that's not actually you. So I saw something connect with you there, and this is like what we've been talking mm -hmm. about. It's the theme of the podcast. Is the theme of our lives. We're going. You know, I've been talking to Dave about this idea of like, why am I working 40, 50, 60 hour, hours a week and then spending 10 or 20 hours doing what I love and being with my family? That is mm -hmm. ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Like, we got to yeah. do a paradigm shift here. So that's what we're taking on. And, and I'm curious to know what Wakefield's feeling right now about uh, your share. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of this you can attach numbers to. Mm -hmm. Numbers all over that story. A lot of them are the money numbers. A lot of them are time numbers. I don't have a great relationship with numbers <laughs> mathematically, but I've got some pretty good life math. And I just heard numbers flying through that. Like all I could hear, I could just hear stuff, things, and numbers. So I have this, I happen to have this poem called Death by Numbers. And the reason I wrote it is because there's a ton of numbers out there that we pay attention to, that are supposed to be important. Financial numbers, and what, being number one, being top five, top 10, top 40, right? I mean, there's all kinds of mm. lucky number seven, unlucky 13, 666, six, six. there's all kinds of fucking numbers around that don't do shit. 420. <laughs> I smoke all day! <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, and then there's these numbers that hide in plain sight. They're the ones that actually do help keep things in order, some semblance thereof, we gotta live together, there's seven billion plus of us. So I just wrote this poem about numbers, it's called Death by Numbers. There must be something wrong with my arithmetic. This ill-divided world could truly make me sick. For all I've ever needed to learn in life has got my mental on the blunder. Every time I turn around, I'm being fooled by a number, schooled by a number. I once, twice, thrice heard that once one and one was two after one before three, but it also was eleven. And I uncovered nothing lucky but the fabled number seven. Four, greed, lust, envy, sloth, gluttony, pride, and wrath. You do the math. We subtract from Mother Earth and then we start multiplying. Like a virus on the reckless while the Earth keeps dying. Some of us wonder what we fucking care. Keep on trying, because no matter how much we got, we act like time be ticking hot. But truly this time, like an endless platoon, we be running out of room. We created three worlds because we be running out of room. In the third world, 4,000 children die daily due diligence to disease, distemper, dementia, destruction, disdain, depression, despair, and dysfunction. And we be running out of room. The second world containing concepts of calculating communism created the construct, planting the crushing cold war, and we be running out of room. 
Cuba. In the first world, we've got appetites like gigabytes. Environmental pugilists keep losing fights because the man be fighting techno hippies with nits for the nanites. Nesting in the blackest undercover of force till night's end, we be running out of room. Glaciers receding, volcanoes exploding, the waters are bleeding, the soil is eroding, pet tectonics breaking down like ebonics, our cultures are broken, Mother Nature has spoken, and we be running out of room. H1N1 present in swine since 1999, claimed 23,000 in a very short time. Avian flu, brick 5,000 by two, has plagued bubonic, moved at rap supersonic, as tens of millions fell victim to chronic malaria and mosquitoes, numbered man by the millions, while they bred by the trillions, four legs good, two legs bad, so say it the shepherd, so say it the flock, Farmageddon is upon us, my brothers and sisters, so say it the shepherd, so say it the flock, and we be running out of room, and then we aim for the stars to do the same shit to Mars. Cause we've been running out of room. We've been run by the numbers, like being run by the bulls. We've been done like dinner, but the belly never falls. Planet number three is determined to devour planet number four of nine. It must bear the bounty and the brunt of 6.7 billion. It's fine time to farm more land to fight the foreseen famine that it fathered. As we kiss the windshields of our cars, we think to buckle up and why we never bothered. 100, merely a suggestion. To 140, made speed a killer commitment. 2020 is perfect vision, but only sees in hindsight. Common sense ain't common till we see the bright lights top. Like a ticker on triple bypass. Come join the zipper club. Like long grain rice with some Andy in it. To save your fucking life, it only takes five minutes. As men in white attempt to play hands of God. Tenuously trying to turn back time on 33 years of working nine to seven, the fact you've been smoking since the age of eleven, at least once every waking hour. Now at five foot four, you're squeezing three, two, one through your bathroom shower. Declining your fourteen days to make three sixty-five is the reason that you lie here and barely alive. You're being ruled by the numbers, and this time it was a leap here. It was three sixty-six to put your sorry ass here. Now life is all but a stopwatch. Great ticking past the quintessential moments of your life. The quell to quest time, creating catalytic strife. The this time continuum has got you on the ripple by breaking life down to its last participle. Your position peels down like a cool calculator. Now the number eight looks like a defibrillator. You've been mastered by the numbers. And finally, infinity is realized by the letter C. Clear! Whoa. <laughs> I was just thinking we need to get a prop mic so that he can drop one every time. <laughs> <laughs> That's just unbelievable, man. Wow. I just feel I had a life-changing moment. Yeah. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. 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 It's incredible. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I, I do. Was oh, so there something much. that, like, what if you were to pull out what what got created there for you? What what is that? Is can you put your thumb on it at all? I I, I actually can because I I love that the, the whole discussion around numbers. I I I've grown up in a Western culture where you go to school. You get get an education, you get a job, and you work till you retire if you survive that long. Right. And then you get some fund manager feeds you the money that you've earned over those years till some moment when you die. That's been pre-calculated. That's been pre-calculated by, by, an, by an insurance actuary. <laughs> like how fucked is that? Mm -hmm. And like it doesn't. None of that is actually. Real, you just become like this. You become a bee, bee. you yeah. know, like the worker bee. You fall in line. Yeah, I, um, you know, I, I get asked sometimes, what would I change in my life? I, I would love to have gone back to be 19 again and actually do something that mattered. Mm. You know, I, and I've had impact in my life outside of work, but all those hundreds of thousands of hours of expended being a banker selling insurance I, like nobody wants it nobody cares <laughs> nobody believes in it um, and the only thing that ever mattered to me were the people who worked for me that was it so i i, I really get it well, like there are there are children dying out there you talked about that uh, um i didn't care i might have given some money when there's a big like the separation of the yeah. world yes i mean that is that is reality. That's what has happened. We are in different worlds. But but who who invented that whole? When did somebody say 
like you, you, we're going to work in this tower and we're going to give you a great pension, you know, and we're going to make money out of you having that pension. And we're, like the whole thing doesn't make any sense. About, about 1956. <laughs> <laughs> the year I was born. That's the year I was born. <laughs> oh, so, oh, it's all making sense. Yeah, we, yeah, but it really, none of that even makes sense when you look at it logically. But yeah. it made perfect sense when totally agree. when you're doing it, and then suddenly well, you don't in... think about it. It's not no. that it doesn't make sense because if you dare to stop and think about it, yeah. it completely shatters your well, entrepreneurship. Your wasn't it? Thing That's back correct. then, it was like if you were a, you were a mess, then you went and run a business because you couldn't do anything else. Marcy, you said something really <laughs> interesting. You said that if you stop to think about it, it kind of falls apart. Mm -hmm. And it's been said that a man would rather die than think. And now we, we know why. Mm -hmm. Because you have to face the dark corners in your life that might not be working or you have to realize that all this stuff that you thought was important is actually an illusion. Yeah. And that's really heavy a big pill for people to swallow. Well, but, and, and that's one that they did swallow. Well, we did. Absolutely. Yeah, right. Like yeah. you, you took the purple pill. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, now what? Totally. Well, we sale. even built yeah, the, the garage sale. Happened. So, so, uh, um, the, they they say I don't know who they are, but um, they say <laughs> like the they. Yeah, we had a yeah. podcast about that. There's a they somewhere. When, the, when the student is ready, the teachers appear. Oh, so so right. during that the year, um, I I think I turned forty around that time so also mm -hmm. a time when a lot of people are have quantum moments where they're um, forced to um face their reality and or buy a harley or, or a right. shrink or, yeah. <laughs> whatever <it's> <laughs> the <laughs> crisis of midlives so we without dragging the, the year on um it started with a road trip actually we decided to get in the car because part of the road trip um the re part of the reason that we started road tripping is because I couldn't deal with planes. Oh, okay. Um, mm -hmm. And because uh, I hadn't worked th through through that stuff. Um, but anyway, we were in Idaho Falls, I think, on our way down to California um, via Utah, etc. Um, we stopped randomly at a garage sale. There was a sign on the side of the road, and we stopped for no reason. Another sign. Right. Mm -hmm. That's an actual sign. A real sign. <laughs> so we bought... Um, Your life-changing moment here. <laughs> we bought some CDs by Wayne Dyer. Ah, nice. Speaking. nice. And... It previously, before I started law school, or maybe in the first few months, um, a psychic told me to read one of his books. And I was like, whatever. I had the book, but I didn't ever read it. And he, for some reason, came, was a message to me over time. And then we saw him on PBS, mm -hmm. and then these CDs appeared. And... I mean, what was interesting is with the, the initial ones we bought, the cases were empty, so we had to turn around and drive back and <laughs> so, so it was like, no, not those ones. These, not are, these, the ones these are the ones, yeah. So oh. <laughs> we listened to that the whole way around the western part of the US. As you're taking a road trip, you had the perfect yeah. companion. Mm. Hours yeah. and hours and hours, hours of it. and hours. Yeah. Oh man, that is so cool. So I don't know how many times we sat in the car going there was a oh, lot of oh, yeah, isn't it? I love that when you're yeah when you're with someone you care about and you have those moments right yeah so we, we've been uh, ardent road trippers over since I think and during that year other teachers that appeared uh, like it was surreal actually the whole year we met the Dalai Lama we actually met wow. Wayne Dyer we um who were some of the other? oh I ended up at a meditation retreat totally by accident um Whoopi Goldberg we saw yeah wow. George Bush like George W. Bush perspectives, yeah. right? all, all in the space of a year right? yeah we've that, never had a year of that magnitude since yeah, not yeah, that yeah. it haven't been good years I, I, I think what dawned on me on that trip too was we we had both been in the corporate world Marcy is a lawyer and me in banking insurance and when we had the opportunity to build something with an entrepreneurial spirit, we did exactly what we did before. We mm -hmm. just built another replica of the corporations we left. So that was an interesting thought that given the freedom and the choice and the chance to go build something, our natural numbers instinct <laughs> made us go build what we just left. Mm -hmm. So that we, we will never do that again. But it was it was well, such yeah. an ingrained automatic thing yeah. for us to do.
So even given the freedom of choice to build something, right. We, we replicated it. So wait, it's wait, not an interesting we're, moment. We we're, left, over here. we're left trying to solve the problem with the original thinking that created it. Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. Even given a, a couple of million bucks of investor money, the freedom to do it, and and being able to write our own pitch, build our own our own fortune. Part of it, though, is because there was investors, etc. Yeah. Because there's that, that expectation. expectation or what you... Um, believe is the expectation that someone else has of you, yeah, and yeah. I've, that's a yeah, thread yeah. through my entire oh, life. Man. Oh, wake, Mr. Whitfield. You get the wake again. Something that I've noticed. I've okay. So I'll say this again because I haven't said it in front of you guys. And something I came to realize with people watching, and uh, I'll try to make it very short. And that is, I've realized when a person is alone and they know that they are alone they will behave naturally they'll talk out loud they'll pick the nose they'll sing off key they'll dance like no one's watching because no one is but all kinds of weird isms and nuances and neuropathies will come out that's what happens and it happens to everyone as soon as a human knows that they are in the presence of another and it doesn't matter if it's in person if they know they're being listened to they know they're being watched. What I realize is a human will attempt to act naturally. When they're alone, they behave naturally. If they know they're in the principle that they, that's so right now we're all attempting to be as natural as possible, you're on stage as soon as there's another human. The relationship with numbers that I'm going to attach to that is I notice that people have predictable humor, have predictable behavior when they see certain numbers, depending on how they're attached to themselves. Mm. As in, like, what happened to you? Mm -hmm. the, the predictable way it was going to go was, yeah, okay, we're going to do this again. People's mm -hmm. behavior can be automatic. Mm -hmm. in certain numbers that they are attached to for certain reasons. Mm -hmm. Not reasons you can really touch, mm -hmm. but an experience. And there's a number, there's a, va there's a number. In there. I'm not trying to get wooed, but I notice this is true. Mm -hmm. People see certain numbers in their bank account, and that decides how they're going to be acting for the next little while. And that's True. fear sometimes. That's yeah. the way I feel. You know, scared is scared. just that simple. Yeah. yeah. But oh. some people are attached to numbers in an oddly predictable way. It, it, it drives their emotions. I want to point to something with that. Because you hear a lot of things about research and statistics, and we've found this, and we've found that. So we study humans, and we find out different trends about how humans behave or how things operate. And I think that, that all that stuff is accurate because we're seeing how a human's behaving in the natural environment. And I think that once you become aware of some of those things, like there's a lot of people who run around going, no, no, that's how it is, man. I've seen the research. That's how that's done. And I go, yeah, I totally get that. And the people that you're researching are probably not aware that that's how it is. And now that you're done research, people are aware of it so that they can notice it in their real lives when they're walking around. They go, oh, this is really weird. I feel super insecure because I'm broke. Like, what's that about? Because i got a great family, and I've got this, and I've got that, and I've got this, and this, and I feel, like, inadequate because I'm broke. Mm -hmm. Well, now that you're noticing that, you can start to, like, do something about mm -hmm. it and shift your context and your thinking around it. So you're no longer a default, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So I, I just, I, I totally agree with you, but I wanted to point that out for listeners that, uh-oh, you're not doomed. Like, now that you're aware of something, it's like mm -hmm. you have an opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. You did so. Yeah. I don't think ever once we sat down and thought, what would we love to do? It was an is an automated yes. response. Like I, I, I'm, I just turned sixty two, and only now in my life am I actually saying what, you know, what do I really want to do? What do and I it's really a struggle. want? To do? Like and that, it still that's is a struggle. To you. It's what's, a struggle. Yeah, what's it's the struggle? struggle? Is it in being yeah. a service to others? Like I don't have. I'm not. It's not my time yet. Is it that kind of dialogue? I, I, I think for me, it's, it's trusting whatever's out there mm -hmm. is going to look after me. And that's been mm -hmm. a constant struggle, you know. Surrender. Surrender yes. and having faith that if I do the right thing, the right thing will happen. Like I, I, I have been programmed, if I'm broke, I'll go work, whatever that is. Like if, if I'm scared, I'll go work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And... Um, so I, I've had always this dilemma of, yes, I trust God. Yes, I have a deep belief that there's something greater than me out there. However, I've generally treated whatever is out there, God, as 
like my emergency fund. He said, get me out of this one. <laughs> <laughs> That's, <laughs> you know? so That's so great. That's so great. And, and I, I see that in a lot of people. It's, oh, fuck, if you get me out of this one, I promise. Is that, is that a hashtag? <laughs> Hashtag God's not your emergency phone? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a new one. Yeah, that's but, so but great, man. I truly great. believe in that the right thing gets the right result. Right. I really believe in that. Because I, d- I don't think we're raised like that. No, we're not. We're, we're <laughs> raised by default. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. by default, the brain is meant to protect you. Yeah. So the way that you protect yourself is mm-hmm. to go to school, get yeah. good grades, get a good job, do a safe and predictable job, yeah. right? And get, get the pension and all that. And then if you're lucky, you'll make it to retirement and you'll have enough money to live until you die. Yeah. Congratulations, you made, it, you made it for life, right? And, and none of that's very exciting. No, and, and it's, none of that, it's not. Right? Yeah. There, there are aspects of that career that I've loved, and sure. it's all been people. None of it's been the numbers. Like, and I'm not a guy who actually, on the surface, will say I care about winning, but I program deep down. Of course, yeah. <laughs> program deep down, you do. Yeah, you, well, and you, you can't actually, help it. You can change the context for what winning actually looks like. Right. Oh, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So absolutely. I would say that you are a, a champion for, for, for winning and for others to win. It's just your your context for it is, has been, has pivoted, it's has shifted. Been, right, because I think it was different for you in in the past as a um, more yeah. junior. Yeah, I, I mean, you've got to get to the top, whatever the top is. <laughs> okay. Uh, and you've got to make x number of dollars but i don't know what the number is either and i've i've spent the time walking on the beach with a, a lot of very wealthy people and i've asked often so what's the number getting back to the wakefield's incredible poem earlier thank you there is no number like is it three million a million 50 million a, a billion million billion as, yeah. as, well that that <laughs> yeah. really um that yeah. really um, brings me back to, I can't remember what the exact phrase was, shockingly there was a lot of phrases, <laughs> but about the um, never being able to fill the hungry mm. belly. Um, um, we've been run by the numbers, like being run by the bulls. We've been done like dinner, but the belly never full. Exactly. Yes, done like dinner, but the belly never full. And um, it's interesting that that came up today too, because I um, was just listening to some podcasts with Gabber Mate. I don't know if you know who yes! but... Um, yeah, um, and he has a book, of course, called I think The Hungry Ghosts. Yes, and, he has several books. Right, but the yes, the, the one that relates to that is The Hungry Ghosts, and um, it yeah, and I never thought in my life I would get to a point, and I I never thought I would get to a point that the belly was never full, and I probably wouldn't have even said in. Um, before the dismantling, as I like to call it, I would have, wouldn't have said that I was that person whose belly was never full. But when I look at it now, it wasn't. You know, it um, needed a better car. It wasn't an obsession, but, well, I have to have a better car because I have this title, like, or um, aspiring to have certain things or um, titles. Like, it didn't have to be uh, material things, but titles... Um, attention, praise, those kind of things. Yeah, yeah. I, I get fear, even now, because when I got sober 20 years ago, I lost everything. Like, everything. I was living in a, a divorce motel where you would call the furniture retro. <laughs> but it was, it was not retro. Mid-century it, it, it had that kind of musty yeah. smell of, yeah, you can <laughs> urine and dirty yeah. socks. So mm-hmm. true. Right, right. I <laughs> lost a candle for that. Yeah, it was also oh, people. Yeah. Oh, so man. that brought its whole old new set of fears. You know, and I, I still live with that fear of losing stuff. So yeah. it, it, you know, I have this constant battle between faith and managing it myself. Mm-hmm. And I, I grab it back, and then I give it, and then I grab it back and give it. And, and we both talk about that regularly. And the, the process of spiritual development in Alcoholics Anonymous is based on filling that hole that Wakeful was talking about with God. Um, and, and, and that is a lifetime process. It's not something that you win at. 
there's no graduation, there's no, no moment yeah, when yeah. I've arrived. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Although I do get moments in my competitive brain where I feel I should be more spiritually <laughs> advanced. You're, you're more spiritual than yeah. the, the person beside yeah. you. Yeah, I think you develop uh, a spiritual yeah. ego. Yeah, totally. Like, which yeah. Is, yeah. I think we all yeah. do that on yes. certain levels. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a weird feeling and you suddenly go, oh, I'm doing it again. Uh, like, <laughs> spiritual ego. <ideals. laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually. Don't tell me about being present. Yeah, yeah there's, a, there's a term that <laughs> really. As I turn my back on your ass. I'm, I am present. I'm present right here. <laughs> there's a term that really grates me in when people describe themselves as, as awakened. Oh, right. oh like that, yeah. that, I, I, mean, I, I get it, and I'm not oh, actually oh. judging that, but it grates on me because I, 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 that's, that's almost saying I've become a superior being in some way. Mm. You know, so it, it's no different than the guy in the corporate world. We just the the egos. I've won at spirituality. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we call that the arrival syndrome. Yeah. So, so we we've got a couple more minutes. We you know it's just the flip side of that is the competition of suffering. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we don't need to go there. It's just oh, yeah, right. a whole yeah. different discussion. I'd, yeah. I'd love to have that. But thanks. And yes. we, and we yeah, love we're matching. Yeah. We're it's gathering. Clear, matching. Yeah. It's clear that uh, all of our guests need to come back for like a second round. Because there is really, truly a richness to um, conversation without borders, to get to know one another at a, at a different level. And man, we, we could talk for hours when that is the topic of conversation. Um, and I really appreciate you guys for playing the game, being willing to play the game. It was a, it was a great experience yeah. for me. Yeah. Well, you've been on many podcasts as of late, and I listen to them, and it's like, yeah, that's not what we're going to talk about on the Jets, which is perfect. It's like you got to talk about all those things, and that's not what we're going to talk about here. No. Well, conversation should never be the same. No, right? no. I would like to, uh, if I think there's a ton that somebody could listen to and pull out of there, and sometimes advice is overrated. I, I get that, but I'm, I'm curious if you have something given. The, the conversation we had today, someone's listening, they're dealing with something. I'm just curious to know, regardless of what that thing is, because ultimately if you boil it down, it's all the same thing. It's something that you're faced with, that you don't want to deal with, or you're afraid to deal with, or whatever. And it's all relative. My problem would be this small, your problem's this small, but that's, it's relative. I got this thing I'm dealing with. So what do you say to those people who are facing something that... <laughs> they both point at each other. Yeah, default. Um, I don't know that I would have advice for someone dealing with something, but one of the things for me that has, um, helped is really understanding how everything is connected and that the problem is part of something bigger, um, down the road. And there's no doubt about that. There is no question about that. And then also understanding how connected we all are and that we're really just stardust, baby. We're all so if part I could, of a whole. Yeah, yeah. The first part that you said that you said that everything's sort of connected. So what I heard in that is that basically if, if I ignore my problems today, if I pretend that they're not real, or if I say one day, someday when I get this dealt with, I'll deal with that. That likely isn't a very good plan. Is that fair? No. Um, like we we have a saying, uh, if if you don't learn the lesson the first time it's presented to you, you get to keep relearning the lesson. Right. Yes. And we've done that a stuff. number of times. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, that's part of being human. But so yeah, totally so the takeaway that. really is be, be aware of the lesson that's being made available for you to learn. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because at some point, you will learn it. And it'll be much louder and than the it, first and time. It's just like, how, how much do you need to learn before you get the lesson? Right. And Tony, I'd love to hear from you as well. So I, I'm not going to give advice because like, I'm divorced, recovering alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I will say, I have a tool that has been absolutely critical to every moment, good and bad in my life. Um, I, I, I learned it in AA and it's a serenity prayer. And it's God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Mm. And our learning process is the wisdom to know the difference. Yeah. And that links to what Marcy said about absolutely. Your, 
learn the lesson or you get to fucking learn the lesson. <laughs> yeah. 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 So that's it's not advice, I realize, but it, it is, that's been my mantra in good and bad times. And um, Those things are more, I find, more usually more helpful mm -hmm. than advice because advice is like, hey, I got this problem right now today, can you help me with that? Mm -hmm. But things like that are things you can take with you mm -hmm. to help you deal with anything that you're dealing with at any moment, right? The, the older I get, the more I seem to know less. <laughs> more, more things change that's just the reality yeah, it's interesting well everything that was um, everything that I thought was real in the morning of my life mm -hmm. and this, this comes from Wayne Dyer has turned out to be a lie in the afternoon yeah. of my life oh that's great <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I just I just want to say like with all of that said um, we talked about the safe route we talked about what's perceived to be the safe route and, and all that and kind of living life with passion and courage um, and ultimately I think what humans are trying to do which is really a, a feeble effort is to avoid pain and avoid, to avoid breakdowns and the reality of it is it's going to happen inevitably no matter what you're going to deal with stuff things are going to happen things are going to be unexpected and you have a choice you can live a life the way that you think you're supposed to live your life to avoid as many of those things as you possibly can and still have to deal with the shit mm -hmm. <laughs> or you can go out and take life take life by the horns and go and live your life and do your life and still deal with the stuff and you'll have a lot more power likely and be more fulfilled on the other side of it. I agree. We have this concept that there's an arrival point and it's a big house and a Lamborghini. Right. There yeah. is no arrival point. Exactly. Yeah. So, so, so the point of it, of this whole podcast is there's no point. <laughs> and, uh, and you can just like let all that shit go. There's no number. No number to get to, uh, no destination to arrive at. You are, you have arrived. Um, so welcome. And, <laughs> and, and once you're having a really hard time dealing with that, you get to deal with that. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, you're exactly where you're supposed to be right now. So if, if you don't want to deal with it, it'll be there until you're ready to deal with it. Because it's actually not going anywhere. And, and at the end of the day, when you leave this current life, if you haven't learned your lessons, you're coming back. You're coming back. You're coming yeah. Back. <laughs> yeah. Can, can, can people uh, be in touch if anyone's touched, moved, and inspired such that they actually yeah, want to reach out? And, okay, great. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Um, I'm on social, so I, I can be reached on LinkedIn at Mrs. Craft with two Fs. Um, and I'm not sure, I don't want to put an email no, on. No, 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 just, no, no, that's yeah, fine. Yeah, but you're that's on great. Instagram yeah. too, right? Yeah. And, and we'll post some of those links in the show notes as well, yeah. just so yeah. that it's easy to reference. And how about you, Tony? How can people do that? Uh, I, I'm pretty active on LinkedIn. Yes, uh, you are. I, I, I am active on there. And you can actually reach me at the Grand. If you call the the Grand, you can press 1 for the for me. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Speak to me directly. Right? Grand, press 1. <laughs> really great. Well, thanks so much for listening. Thanks so much for coming. Incredible. Wake, thanks for thanks, Ryan. And your thanks to everybody, your wisdom and, and your work. Aaron, thank you for being quietly thanks, Aaron. awesome so, in the background. I'm never gonna forget what Wake did today. Oh yeah, no, it's, it's, it's so great. Have a great Saturday and we'll see you next week.